Do you want to build a snowman? Uh, it snows kind of crusty, but no, we can. No, Do you want to build a snowman? Okay, we can build a snowman if you really want to build a snowman. <laughs> no, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> he doesn't know. You're not getting the reference, are you? No. Not at all. Everybody has a hometown. Mine? Green River, Wyoming. Population 12,000. So yeah, it's a small town. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go, we're going to meet uh, different people who've lived here their whole lives, they've never left. All my kids have graduated from Green River High School. Some people who've dreamed of leaving and have stayed here. I have kids that have graduated from here and left and not going to come back here and they are now here raising families. So. We're going to meet my art teacher, Rudy Gunner, who is one of the most fantastic people that I could possibly introduce you to. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How you doing? We're going to get to know him today as we discover my hometown, Green River, Wyoming. I just think of Green River as home. Just hometown, great feeling, great people. Living in Green River, there's no um, weight on your shoulders. Everybody knows everybody. No matter what happens, you know there's always going to be somebody there that you can turn to. It's warm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Friendly. Warm. Not warm, warm as in, oh, okay. <laughs> Not in <laughs> weather. My parents are here. It's, my sisters are here. It's nice to have everyone here close. Uh, it's a good place to, to have a family. You don't lock your car doors. You don't lock your house doors. It is what it is. Everybody is who they are. I've been many places. I've done things, but this is my hometown. What makes a hometown? What do you remember when you look back? What sticks out? I remember that we were all really close in our class. I mean, we had fun with everybody. I just remember having an incredible childhood in Green River. I couldn't believe coming into town how small this town is compared to when I was a little kid. This was the biggest place in the whole entire world. You can't tell any of the wrestling stories, can you? No. no that's, <laughs> this is a you know, PG show. It's kind of like Vegas. It's got to stay where it's at. So you know what we would do right over here? On top of one of these ridges, we would go up there with a bucket of golf balls and we would uh, tee off and we'd listen to see what kind of damage we would do. We never did any, just so you know. <laughs> and by the way, your house is right below that hill. <laughs> when you look back, who are the people that you remember the most? Um, Mr. McCullough, I used to be his aide for like every year. He told me some really good life stories that I just have to laugh about now because he was right, you know. When you get married, your wife is beautiful, and then her butt gets about <laughs> this big. So I remember when I was pregnant and I'd see Mr. McCullough, I'd hide. I was like, the story is real. Tony Sabrina was, he, he did more for me as a young person than just about any of my other teachers. Mr. Dell. Do you guys remember Dell? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Dell in junior high. <laughs> Mr. Maddox. Mr. Rockholz. Rudy. 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 I cannot say enough about him. Rudy's uh, been part of our, my life, my kid's life, uh, for quite a while. In every hometown, there seems to be that one person that has an impact on everyone. I've known Rudy since I was probably about three or four years old. Him and my dad are like best friends. He was my coach in high school basketball. First time I saw Rudy, because of what he taught and what he did, I thought he was custodian in the school. I know Rudy on so many different levels as neighbor, friend. I taught with him for 28 years. If you come into town to see the GR up on the hill, he and I did that. He drove the bus for a number of years. And when I first started driving, we would, um, I was nervous. I was like, I can't do this, and he's like, just be calm, you can do this. He has a way of making you feel comfortable behind the wheel. What he could teach people, I mean, if he can teach you, I mean. That's a miracle. That is a miracle, that's a, that's a wonderful man there. That, he taught my daughter multiplication and division tricks that got her to where she is now today. I mean, that, she's a math whiz. Start out on Rudy in art class. He took the time not only to be my teacher, but he was my friend. My sons were in his art class. One did really well, and uh, he was doing, working on a sculpture. And I said, uh, my goodness, Darren, how, how do you do that? 
He said, if you had Rudy as a teacher, you could do it too, Dad. Rudy Gunner has lived here the entire time I've known him. He could have gone and lived in Venice, maybe Rome, pursued an art career in Paris. He stayed right here. We're going to go inside and meet him. We're going to look at his studio where he has sculpted some of the most amazing bronzes you'll ever see. So come with me as we meet Rudy. So he took me back into his studio and suddenly I was a student again. But this time it wasn't about art. He was teaching me about life. Okay, so okay. explain to me what you're doing. Okay, what I'm trying to do here. I was seeing myself again as a kid and I could really feel, I don't know, the care that he had, not just for me, but everybody he'd ever worked with. And it all came into perspective of his life and the decisions he had made and what that meant to this entire community of Green River. This is your, okay, okay so here's mine. the, it's, it's gonna be a sculpt off. While we're competing, and I'm gonna sculpt uh, your lovely shaped head, okay? It's changed over the years, you do know that. It got smaller, right? <laughs> no, it's, you got a big, when you're smart and as brilliant as you are, your head gets bigger, right? Oh, I thought when you got old, everything shrunk, huh? Not everything, <laughs> <laughs> so I hear. Anyhow, so here's what I wanna ask you. What, what made you get into art in the first place when you were a young whippersnapper? Three or four years old, I was too young to hold a pencil that I would have my mother draw pictures for me because I thought that was so awesome. I wanted to be a professional sculptor is what I really wanted to do. But life doesn't always happen the way you plan. And for Rudy, it was no different. So did the family. I had to have some kind of income to take care of them. I said, what I'll do is I'll do my artwork on the side, but I will be a teacher to pay my bills. Little did I know that the teaching would become one of the most important things in my life. I taught for 41 years, and you figure I had probably three or four art classes, 15 kids per class. A couple hundred a year. Right. 41 years, a couple hundred students a year. You do the math. Sculpting is probably the, my favorite media in art, but my favorite thing that I ever done was to teach hundreds of kids how to draw a paint sculpture. Rudy doesn't see himself like everybody else. To him, he was the winner. He was the one who was shaped and molded by Green River, by us. Green River made me a better, better person because of the relationships I formed with not only the students, but a good portion of the people who live here. I think for a lot of us who lived in Green River as we traveled the world and been outside of the state and away from home, we realized we take our hometown with us. It is a part of what we do and say and it's what makes us unique. So when we're talking and visiting with people and sharing our lives with them, we're really sharing our hometown. If you had to choose, looking back, between being a professional artist and going and traveling the world and putting out sculptures for everybody to enjoy, or being a high school teacher, looking back, would you do it any different? No. I'd still be the high school teacher. like Rudy, they love him. Like he's really made an impact on so many people and I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to get to know him and that he was my teacher and that I can tell my kids and I can actually show them paintings that I created because he took the time to work that out and to be there for me.
kindest, most loving, most caring human being I've ever known in my life. There's nothing phony about him. He is what he is. He doesn't pretend to be anything he's not. He doesn't realize the impact he has on people. A lot of people have asked me who has had the greatest influence in my life. Of course, my parents, but next to them, Rudy Gunner. And that's why I love coming home, because Green River, yeah, that's who I am. Who's that scallywag right there? Now, see, it's so dark, you can't tell us. That is you, that is you, that is you. And by the way, I'm getting fouled and you're not calling any fouls. Yeah, but look, I, I'm blowing the whistle, you can see the whistle. I remember very clearly that land, that's Wyoming. There's dead animals everywhere. If they're not on the walls, taxidermied very nicely. Well, they're just laying on the side of the road, and of course you gotta pick them up and take them with you. Don't act like you're innocent here. Somebody had to go grab the horse head and, and, and bring it in here. Yeah, I found those when I was hunting. Oh, sure. You shouldn't be shooting horses, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I killed a rooster this morning so I could get this. One moment, please. Grab a bag of donuts, some milk, and stop being a jerk. Well, I'm not getting all those. Well, I met Rudy when I uh, was in junior high. I beat up his son and uh, then immediately went into his art class and tipped over my chair, yelled at me. And I knew right there and then that we were going to be really, really close. Out of all my art teachers, <laughs> you, were, you were one of them. <laughs> you were one of you them. You were one of them. <laughs> you got mad at me less than most. But boy, all you had to do is give me a look because for some reason, obviously I didn't want to upset you. I didn't care less if I upset the math teacher. <laughs> You have grandkids. Yes. Do you want to build a snowman? Well, with them. Yeah. <laughs>